Welcome to Grace Abounds. I'm Pastor Jen Shaw, and in this podcast, I'm sharing my Sunday sermons from St. John's Lutheran Church, Palm Desert, California. I'm so grateful that you've joined us, and I trust that these words build you up in faith, hope, and love. You may have heard the story of two strangers who sat next to each other on a long airplane flight. They began to chat and get to know each other. One was an astronomer, the other was a theologian. And eventually, each one shared their view of the other's profession. The astronomer said, I believe all theology can be summed up in the phrase, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. To which the theologian replied, and I believe all astronomy can be summed up in the phrase, twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. The wise men wondered about a star in our reading from the Gospel of Matthew for today. Our contemporary vision of the wise men is informed not only by scripture, but also by Christmas traditions, Christmas carols, we three kings, Christmas nativity scenes that place the wise men alongside the shepherds and the angels and Mary and Joseph at the birth of Jesus. And while these Christmas traditions are lovely, they are some of them not entirely historically and biblically accurate. For example, the wise men were probably not present right at the birth of Jesus. Matthew notes that when they find the place when the star stops and they visit the child Jesus, they enter into a house, indicating a more permanent residence than the stable in which Jesus was born. And there were probably more than three. Matthew doesn't actually tell us how many wise men there were, but it's unlikely in that time and place that such a small party would have undertaken such a long journey. It's likely that they traveled in a large caravan with a great many people and animals and resources for the journey. We get the number three from the three gifts that they gave to Jesus gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And it's likely that they weren't kings, though they probably worked with kings. The Greek word translated as wise men is magi, a word that means magician, interpreter of dreams, astrologer. The predominant view in the cultures of that time and place was that the sun and moon and stars in their movements influenced human affairs. So the magi, as those who studied the heavenly bodies and their movements, were likely the religious leaders of the people. And so they would have been consulted by kings in spiritual matters. And the wise men were likely not Jewish. Matthew notes that they are from the east, likely Persia, Neither they nor Matthew identify them as being Jewish. And when they arrive in Jerusalem, they ask the current Jewish king, Herod, for both biblical and geographical directions. They were very likely Gentiles, foreigners, outsiders, who were wise men. It was part of their profession as magi to study the night sky, the movements of the heavenly bodies, the stars in their courses, and to discern what that might mean for human lives in the course of human history. They were constantly looking for unusual phenomenon. They were constantly looking for signs. And they saw a sign a star in its rising, a star in the east. Now, Matthew doesn't tell us what was unique about this particular star, but it was unique enough that it caught the attention of the wise men. Some scholars suggest that it might actually have been a great conjunction of two or more planets passing so closely in the night sky that they shone as one bright star. 
On December 21st, 2020, there was a great conjunction of the planets Saturn and Jupiter, and it was called the Christmas star. I took a photo of it from my front yard. I don't know if you can just see it there, center left, just above the shadow of the palm tree. Christmas star from a couple years ago. Matthew also doesn't tell us exactly how the wise men knew that that star was a sign that the king of the Jewish people had been born. Now, perhaps they had heard about the expectation among the Jewish people that God would send the king, the Messiah, the savior of the world. And they heard that from Jewish people who had been exiled or traveled to Persia years before. And perhaps they knew of the promise of a coming Messiah because the Old Testament, filled with prophetic words like we heard from Isaiah, speaks of the coming king. And the Old Testament would have been among the many manuscripts they read and studied from many different cultures as part of their profession. Perhaps an angel announced to them, as an angel announced to the shepherds in the fields watching their flocks by night, that a king had been born. However they received the information, they wisely discerned that the star was a sign that would lead them to the king. And they took action. They followed that star. They sought out that king to honor him, to give him gifts. If they were from Persia, that was a journey of some 2,000 miles in that time and place, it would have taken months. It represented a great amount of time and effort and expense. A journey undertaken, it seems, with the expectation of nothing in return. Except, of course, for meeting a new king. They were wise, but they didn't have all the information they needed. So, as Matthew recounts, when they stopped in Jerusalem... They inquired from the current Jewish king, Herod, about the future Jewish king. And Herod consulted with the chief priests and the scribes, as the Persian kings might have consulted with the Magi, about where the Messiah would be born. And they tell him, according to the prophet Micah, the Messiah will be born in Bethlehem. And so Herod sends the wise men to Bethlehem, a little town that was only six miles away from Jerusalem. And here, Matthew presents a striking contrast between the Gentile wise men, the outsiders, and the Jewish religious leaders, the insiders. The Jewish religious leaders knew scripture. They knew the promise of the coming Messiah. They even knew where the Messiah would be born. But they weren't, it seems, looking for him. They didn't see the sign of his birth. They didn't discern what the star meant. And while the wise men traveled thousands of miles to see Jesus, the religious leaders didn't travel six. And when the wise men find Jesus, they are overwhelmed with joy. They go into the house where the Holy Family is staying, and they kneel before the child Jesus and honor him as a king. And then they open their treasure chests and give him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. One could argue not the most practical gifts, I read a cartoon once in which the three wise women brought formula, diapers, and teething rings. <laughs> but they were generous, expensive gifts nonetheless that would have helped the Holy Family financially. They were also gifts that bore symbolic significance for the life and ministry of Jesus. Gold is the gift for a king. Jesus is the Messiah, the Lord. 
the one who fulfills the hope and expectation that God would send somebody, someone to embody God's redemptive reign, to shepherd God's people, to bring God's ultimate and lasting peace on earth. Frankincense is a plant resin that was used in temple worship as an incense offering to God. And so it was associated with God's presence among the people. Jesus is Emmanuel, the God of all creation in the flesh. God joined with us in our humanity. God with us and for us now and forever. Myrrh was also a plant resin that was used for, among other things, embalming the bodies of the dead. Jesus is the Savior. Some 30 or so years after his birth, Jesus was betrayed and arrested. He suffered and died on the cross and was buried. And on the third day, he rose again to life. And in so doing, he saved us. He defeated death forever. He gives us life that does not end. The birth, the life, the ministry, the death and resurrection, the ongoing presence of Jesus Christ with us is truly good news of great joy for all the people. For several years in the 90s and 2000s, I would travel with my mom and dad, and I'm so delighted my mom's here this morning (laughs) in worship with us. We would go to the Mid-State Fair in Paso Robles, California, Central California, and we would usually make a trip of it three or four days and We'd go to different places in the area, Solvang, San Luis Obispo. In 2003, and I know this because of the old school date stamp on some of the photos, we decided to drive up the coast from Paso Robles to Monterey. This is a picture from that journey up the coast. We spent the day in Monterey. It got dark. We were driving back. I was driving my folks in my Saturn. And my dad was navigating, and he decided we should take the scenic route. I still don't know where we actually drove to this day. It was a lonely, isolated mountain road with, I kid you not, salamander crossing signs. But I don't think I've ever seen a clearer, crisper night sky. It was so beautiful that we, that we pulled over in, in a pullout safely and got out and just looked up at the stars. Hundreds, thousands, millions of them just filling the night sky. The Milky Way was so clear. I wish I had a picture of it to show you. We did obviously eventually find our way back. But for me that night, those stars were a sign of God's grandeur and presence and care. The wise men were looking for a sign. They saw the star and discerned what it meant, and they followed that star to the light of the world. Are you looking? Are you seeking God's will and God's way in your life? And do you see? Are you aware of God's gracious presence, of God's healing work in this broken world? And do you discern? Are you studying the scriptures and praying, asking for God's guidance and open to the promptings of the Holy Spirit and seeking the wise counsel of others? And are you taking action? Are you following where Christ leads you? Are you bringing your gifts of time, talent, and treasure to the Lord to serve God and God's people to do God's good work in this world? The wise men followed the light of a star to the light of the world. May we also have the wisdom to see and to follow the stars that lead us to Jesus. 
Amen. Thanks for listening. Each week's episode is edited by Nick Cox. Music performed by our St. John's Worship Band. Sermons by me, Pastor Jen Shaw. Make sure to subscribe to hear each week's message. If you'd like to know more about St. John's mission to know Christ and make Christ known, to share the life-giving word and do the life-giving work of Jesus, visit our website, stjohnslutheran.church. May God bless you on this day and in all the days ahead.